So what we're trying to figure out here is which compound, copper 1 oxide or copper 2 sulfide, contains more copper. Now the first thing we need to do is convert the names to actual formulas. And then we can focus on molar masses and percents and then compare our percentages. So when we're looking at the formulas, we have to pay attention to this Roman numeral here, because that tells us the charge on the ion. So copper is going to have a plus one charge, and oxygen always makes a negative two. And if you crisscross them, it's Cu with that two, goes down there, Cu2, and then O gets the one. So O and then imaginary one right here that I'm not going to write. So there's copper one oxide. Remember that one means it's a plus one charge. Over here, copper is making a plus two charge, and sulfur makes a negative two charge. So copper gives away two electrons, sulfur takes two electrons, everybody's happy, one to one ratio, and this is CuS. So here's our two formulas. The next thing we have to do is calculate the molar masses of each of these compounds. So the first formula is going to be copper, and there's two of them. They each have a molar mass of 63.5 grams. Oxygen, there's only one, and it has a mass of 16.0. So you're going to have 127.0 grams of copper plus 16 grams of oxygen. That comes out to a grand total of 143.0 grams. So that's our first compound. The CUS, cop copper and sulfur, there's one copper, so it's 63.5 grams. There's one sulfur. You look on the periodic table, it's 32.1. Add them together and you get 95.6 95.6 grams so this is our total so now we know what the molar mass of each of these compounds is if we want to figure out the percent of copper we have to take the part that's copper in the first compound it's 127 divided by the grand total for that compound which is 143.0 multiply by 100 and that tells us this, that this compound has 88.8% copper in it. The other formula, CUS, has 63.5 grams of copper in a grand total of 95.6 grams of copper sulfide. Divide the two, multiply by 100, and this comes out to about 66.4% copper. So then we compare the two, and we say which one's got more. This one has 88.8, this one has 66.4, so this one has more copper. So if I was a company, and I had to extract copper, and assuming it had the same amount of energy and resources uh, in time to extract it from both compounds, I would assume that this one would be better because it has a greater percentage of copper in there. So I'll spend my efforts extracting copper from copper 1 oxide, Cu2O.